All right, I'm David Harry, and in this video, I'm going to be comparing Samsung's S24 Ultra here, which is Samsung's latest flagship for this year, and comparing it to last year's old iPhone 15 Pro Max by Apple. So what I'm going to be doing here is specifically testing both of these phones to see how fast their storage is when connected to an external USB-C SSD. So not only will I be comparing both of these phones to see how fast their internal storage is at communicating data to and from an external SSD, but this test will also tell us the speed of the USB-C interfaces on both of these these phones as well which is very important now for anybody out there who just doesn't have the time to watch a very involved video and when I say very involved I just mean super boring let me give you the results right now so the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra has got a bitrate for its write speed of 373 megabytes per second whereas the Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max has got a bitrate for its write speed of 947 megabytes per second and as far as the read speeds are concerned the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra has got a bit rate for its read speed of 406 megabytes per second and the Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max has got a bit rate for its read speed of 900 megabytes per second <laughs> Uh, once again, Samsung have embarrassed themselves. Okay, so what I'm going to do for anybody interested in how this was all worked out is to do four different tests. The first test is the S24 Ultra for its write speed. And then the second test is the S24 Ultra for its read speed. The third test is for the iPhone 15 Pro Max for its write speed. And then the fourth test is for the iPhone 15 Pro Max for its read speed. Now, just one other thing here before I dive into these tests and I have to make this one super clear because a lot of people completely don't understand this when we are measuring megabytes and gigabytes we measure in base 10 so basically there's a thousand megabytes in a gigabyte what it is prior to 1999 that number used to be 1024 it hasn't been that since 1999 plus the measurement for 1024 isn't actually anything to do with megabytes kilobytes or gigabytes it is a completely different name for a completely different number so what i will be doing in this video is to measure the test file being used correctly as in base 10 so a thousand megabytes in a gigabyte anyways there's a bunch of chapters to each of the separate tests and i will come back at the end do an end summary and just give out a little bit more information as well Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is just to show you what it is that I've got here on the table. So the first thing is a phone for using as a timer. The next thing here is obviously the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which I'm bound to call the iPhone or the Pro Max or something. We do know what it is. And then here we've got the S24 Ultra. Once again, I might call this the S24, the Ultra, the Samsung or something, but we do know what it is. And then what I've got here is the SSD that I will be using. Now, as far as this SSD is concerned, it is one that I've put together myself. Now, this consists of a Sabrent NVMe to USB-C enclosure and inside of it we have got a Samsung SSD 980 now this is a Gen 3 NVMe 1 terabyte SSD now the combination of both the case and the SSD that's inside this is capable of around a gigabyte per second or about a thousand megabytes per second within its read and write speeds depending obviously upon what it's being plugged into now as we should be able to see on this end here there is the USB-C port and it clearly has got a 10 on it so that means that this is a 10 gigabits per second USB-C port like I say it will do around a gigabyte per second but the port is USB-C 10 gigabits now as far as the cable is concerned let me see if I can get a quick shot on the end here wrong way around I think so the cable is also a Sabrent cable and it is the one that comes with the actual SSD now the cable is also capable of 10 gigabits per second so obviously this entire SSD is a 10 gigabits per second USB-C 
SSD. And last thing, it is also formatted to the XFAT format, and it has to be XFAT because I need the drive to be readable in both the Samsung and the Apple phones. The Apple phone would be able to read APFS, however, the Samsung phone will not be able to read APFS, so therefore it is XFAT. Okay, so the first phone that I'm going to test is the S24 Ultra here. Now, what I'm going to do first of all is just show you some stuff about the phone, just so we can see what the environment's like with it. So as we can see there, I'm in flight mode. Now, this basically means that like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and a bunch of other things are switched off. So what this means is that the phone won't be getting interrupted and those interruptions may actually kind of do stuff with the internal storage. So none of that going on. Now, if I come here, as we can see, there are no apps running either. So the phone is essentially as locked down and as quiet as possible. Again, just so that nothing can interfere with the internal storage when we're doing this particular test. Now, let me just come back to here. So what I'm going to do is go into the Samsung folder and I will launch the My Files app here, which is the file browser by Samsung. Now, let me just scroll here. And as we will see, I'm just about to connect the SSD and we will see it pop up in the list here. So let me get this in and we'll see it pop up. Hold on. Should pop up in a sec here. There we go. So USB storage one. Now, let me just see if I can get this SSD in a position where it'll stay. Look, it, right, the SSD is not going to say stay straight. It's on a short cable. However, the angle of the SSD is not going to interfere with the test. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just pop onto the storage first or the external storage. Now, as we're going to see, oh, actually, before I do that, sorry, one quick thing. If I go back here, as we will see, internal storage says the phone is 512 gigabytes in size as far as its storage concerned. And then of that, 102 gigabytes is being used. So basically, we've got like over 400 gigabytes of free storage here. So basically, that spare space there just means that there is absolutely no way that we're going to run into like, you know, space issues and stuff to do with the test and whatnot. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go onto the USB storage. Now, this will be the file that I'll be using here. This is a file that I use quite often with these types of tests. So this kind of just keeps a lot of my testing you know a bit consistent by using the same large file and as you can see here that file says 72.03 gigabytes in size so that is a singular large file now to be precise that file is 72,026 megabytes in size so like I say it's a large file and this definitely gives us the ability to go past like you know any kind of buffering and caching and stuff and go direct to the storage itself okay so what I'm going to do here is select that I'm gonna select copy I'm going to come back here I will go to the internal storage now what I'm going to do is to copy here as the thing says there which is it's kind of a bit misleading actually that should say paste anyways I'm gonna just copy here then at the same time hit start on the stopwatch here or on the other phone and then what we're gonna get is our timing once it's all run through so let me just do this a sec hold on Okay, so I hit both of those buttons out there about the same time. Now, what I'm doing here, obviously, is moving data from the SSD to the phone. So right now, what we're doing is seeing the read speed of the SSD compared to the write speed of the phone. Now, we could look at this as either reading or writing, depending upon what device we're looking at here. But anything that I do in this video is testing for the phones. So right now, we are testing for the uh, the re uh, sorry the write speed of the actual phone here. So this is the write speed test for the phone that I'm doing. Now, of course, some people out there might be thinking to themselves, well, hold on a minute, Dave, surely you can only like determine that if the external source is faster well yes it is the thing is and i don't want to jump the gun here because i'm going to go into some details at the end of the video and i'll explain a few things but in this instance 
The SSD is way faster than the phone, so basically the SSD is not bottlenecking. Anywho, so as far as the write speed for the phone's internal storage is concerned within this particular setup here, what I'm going to do is speed through the test and then come back and hit stop on the stopwatch just as it gets to the end. And then that will get us the timing that I need to calculate the write speed for the S24 Ultra. Okay, so I'm going to come back in here and get ready to hit stop on the counter when this is finished. So there we go, stop. Okay, right, I think maybe I might have been maybe just under a second late there hitting stop. So what I'm going to do is round down this to 3 minutes and 13 seconds. So let me just make a note of that. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is to transfer the exact same file from the S24 Ultra to the external SSD. Now to do that, I'm going to have to go back to the SSD. I'm going to have to delete the file that's on the SSD. So let me just delete that. Give me a second while that goes. And then let me just come back here. Let me just make sure it's not hanging around in the bin. Okay, so there's nothing in the bin. I'm just making sure here that there are no residual versions of that file hanging around anywhere, which could obviously maybe get, you know, misinterpreted and then get like, you know, recalculated back into anything. Oh, anyway, Dave, shut up, you're boring. Right, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go to the internal storage of the phone. I'm going to select the file there and then i'm going to tap on copy i'm going to come back here and then i'm going to go to the external storage and i'm going to copy here or paste the file to there and then time it once again so give me one second hold on boom there we go okay i hit those roughly at the same time they would have been like tenths of a second within that difference so nothing that i need to round up or round down now what i'm doing here obviously is reading from the S24 Ultra and writing to the SSD. But as I've already established before, because what we're doing here is concentrating on the actual phones, what I'm measuring here now is the read speed of the S24 Ultra. So once again, I'm just gonna speed through this and come in at the end and hit stop and get a timing, which will then allow me to get the bit rate for the read speed. Okay, I'm going to come back in here and get ready to hit stop on the counter or the stopwatch once this gets to 100% and has moved the file over. So let's see, there we go, stop. Right, I think I was probably just slightly ahead of that just then. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to round up the 2 minutes and 56.55 up to 2 minutes and 57 because I think it did just squeeze in ever so slightly but I'm only rounding up by half a second here so that's going to be 2 minutes and 57 seconds let me just make a note of that Okay, so I've now moved over onto the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and the first thing that I will do here is just to give you an overview of the environment again. So once again, let me just swipe down from the top there, as we can see, I am in airplane mode or whatever they call it on the iPhone, which basically and once again means there is no kind of communicating going on with the phone via, say, any of its wireless options, which could possibly interfere, you know, with the internal storage if there were wireless things going on, but there isn't. And then if I come here, what I'm going to do is just go to settings first of all, because unfortunately for Apple, what they tend to do is put settings for certain apps somewhere where the app is not so uh, you know the only way that i can find to you know to see my av my available space on the internal storage is to come here and as we can see the internal storage is saying that there is 396 gigabytes available from 512 so whilst there's slightly less like you know available on the iphone here we're still in like a you know a region of like 400 gigabytes as we were with the s24 ultra now let me just pop that out of the way and then actually what I'm going to do now is just show you that there's no apps running in the background. So I can't flick this up because there's no apps running in the background. Okay, so let me just jump onto the file browser. And the reason why I had to show you, you know, the storage size within settings is because I don't know if anyone can tell me if it's available somewhere in the file browser. I've never seen it. It would be interesting or it would actually be very useful if you could see that information with from within the file browser. Anywho, what I'm going to 
do is to connect the SSD and we should see it populate within the actual locations here. Hold on, popped it in there, so that should pop in momentarily. There we go. Okay, so let me just again try and space these out and get them a bit neat. Um, like I say, the SSD is going to move about a little bit. We know this. Anywho, so what I'm going to do is go to the external drive here. Oh, by the way, as well, yeah, the external drives actually come up with its name here, which is something that it didn't do on the S24 Ultra. I actually named that one terabyte XFAT. I don't think that actually came up on the S24 Ultra. So let me go here. Now, another thing that we should note here is the file size. So once again, this is saying 72.03 gigabytes in size so it's saying it's the exact same size as what the s24 ultra is saying um, now what's interesting there is that they have both rounded up to like 03 when in fact as i've already said it, that the file size is indeed 72,026 megabytes in size and that will be the measurement that i use for calculating the bit rates as well and once again let me just be dead clear about this bit these files are measured as in like 1000 megabytes in a gigabyte and that is absolutely the way you do these things because files and data storage are measured using base 10. We don't use 1024 and we have not used that since 1999 for the measurement of the likes of drive space and files and stuff like that. Anywho, what I'm going to do is, oh yeah, I need to copy that so let me just hit copy there let me come back here i'm going to go to on my iphone and then once again i'm going to paste this on here and hit start at the same time so give us a sec okay so they were effectively hit at the exact same time now once again as i've already said here what i'm doing is reading from the actual ssd but writing to the internal storage and in context of this particular test it is the actual storage of the of the phones that we're worried about here so what i'm doing here is testing for the right speed of the iphone so what i'm going to do now is just let this speed through and then i will come back in just before it finishes hit stop on that timer and then that will give me the time that I need to calculate the bit rate okay I'm going to come back in here and that blue dot up there once that gets full the file will have been transferred in so let me get oh there we go stop right I was slightly late there on hitting stop by the looks of it but you know what this is way faster than the S24 Ultra here, so I don't think an extra second being added on is going to make any difference to this test. So I'm going to call that 1 minute and 16 seconds. So let me just make a quick note of that time. Okay, so now that I've got my notes up to date here for the stuff that I'm writing down on a bit of paper next to the side of the table there, what I'm going to do is now do the other way around. So again, I'm going to copy the file from the phone to the external storage, in which case we are measuring the read speed within this particular setup of the phone. But of course, the first thing that I'm going to have to do is go back to the external storage and I'm going to have to delete that file. Uh, okay, so that file's deleted. Let me come back here. In fact, let me just double check in the bin, see if it's in the bin yet. Yeah, there it is. So I'm going to wipe it out from the bin. I think I might have explained this before, possibly, but the reason why I'm obviously deleting the bin, that's just so that there's like no residual versions of this file hanging around, which could possibly interfere with anything as far as the name of the file is concerned and caching and stuff like that. Anywho, that's dead boring. Let me come back here and go to the less boring thing. So I'm going to go to on my iPhone I'm going to copy the file from here there we go copy I'll come back I will select the external storage and once again I'm going to paste and hit start at the same time don't forget what we're doing here is the read speed of the iPhone so hold on boom there we go hit them effectively at the same time and now once again what i'm going to do is just to speed through this and then come back in just before the end so we can get the timing for this particular run which once again will allow me to work out the bit rate Okay, I'm going to come back in here and get ready once that blue dot's gone and stuff and the files go. Oh, there we go. Stop. Okay, again, you know, I might have been out by a second here, but as people have obviously guessed by now, 
the iPhone is just doing this way faster anyway, so the odd second being added onto the iPhone won't matter. In fact, you know what? I'm going to round that up to 1 minute and 20 seconds, so I could even be like 2 seconds further up the scale here for the iPhone, and it just will not matter, so give us a second. Okay, so I've just made a note of that timing, so what I'm going to do now is to go away and just work out the bit rates. However, this next cut right now is going to give you the actual results of this speed test and the bit rates. Okay, so I've done my quick calculations here, and here are the results. So for test one, what we were doing was moving the file from the external SSD to the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Now, the time taken was 3 minutes and 13 seconds, which equals 193 seconds. So if we take the size of the test file, which was 72,026 megabytes, and we divide that by 193 we get 373 which equals 373 megabytes per second now moving on to test two and what we were doing here was moving the file from the samsung galaxy s24 ultra to the external ssd now the time taken here was two minutes and 57 seconds which equals 177 seconds once again we divide the file size by the time taken so that is 72,026 divided by 177 which equals 406 which is equal to 406 megabytes per second now for test 3 we were moving the file from the external ssd to the apple iphone 15 pro max the time taken was 1 minute and 16 seconds which equals 76 seconds so again we divide the file size for the test file which is 72,000 2026 by the time taken which is 76 seconds and that gives us 947 which is 947 megabytes per second and then moving on to test 4 and what we've done here was to move the file from the apple iphone 15 pro max to the external ssd and the time taken for this was one minute and 20 seconds which is 80 seconds once again we divide the file size by the amount of seconds taken which is 72,026 divided by 80 which equals 900 so that gives us 900 megabytes per second so moving on to the final comparisons and for the right speed test the samsung Galaxy Galaxy S24 Ultra had a bit rate of 373 megabytes per second, but the Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max had a bit rate of 947 megabytes per second. Now moving on to the read speed test, and the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra had a bit rate of 406 megabytes per second, but the Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max had a bit rate of 900 megabytes per second so i think we can see here that there is a very clear winner okay so to an end summary then and what we've just seen there is the absolute obliteration of the s24 ultra by the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, I know at the beginning of the video, I was kind of making a bit of a joke saying, oh yeah, this is last year's phone. However, when I did a test last year with the 15 Pro Max against the S23 Ultra, all the Android fanboys were moaning saying, yeah, but no, that's the old Android phone by Samsung, even though we're literally talking months apart between their releases. And of course, right now, there's only months apart between both of these releases. So I was just kind of like, you know, taking the piss a bit when i said that before however the reason why i'm making this point clear is because unfortunately samsung have not updated the actual storage or the usb-c bus speed on the s24 ultra compared to last year's s23 ultra so what we're seeing here is basically samsung just not really caring about upping the specifications for the 
actual storage speed and the USB-C bus speeds, which is really disappointing because when you've got a phone which could have maybe like half a terabyte or like one terabyte worth of storage, you're going to have to get that data off that phone quickly at some point. Now, the way you do that is to increase the bus speed and also the storage speed of what's inside the phone in order for you to be able to drag files off or move them on as fast as possible. Now, I can say with absolute certainty that the S24 Ultra only has a five gigabits per second USB-C port on it. And the reason why is because neither the read or the write speeds coming out of that phone went even anywhere near five gigabits per second. But on top of that, what this means is that when those data rates didn't get anywhere near five gigabits per second, that's also telling us that the storage inside the S24 Ultra is also not as fast as it should be. Now, don't forget the S24 Ultra here has got a UFS 4.0 zero memory storage unit inside of it which basically means that that storage can go way way higher than what the actual USB-C port is doing now what that's also telling us is that particular storage module is not the best version of UFS 4.0 either and the reason why that is is because obviously it was slower than even the five gigabits that the USB-C port has got on it now if any of you Android people or Samsung people out there just basically basically don't want to acknowledge that that's a problem then fair enough but as soon as any of you people start getting a half terabyte or a one terabyte version of these phones and you're sitting there watching paint dry because you are having to move massive files and it's quite slow then that's when it's really going to bother you whereas on the other hand the iPhone 15 Pro Max here has got a 10 gigabits per second connection on its USB-C port also its storage inside is really fast as well so what that basically means is that we are going to hit like very fast speeds on its reading and writing across USB-C when matched with a fast SSD. Now, as far as the SSD is concerned that was being used in this test, this is actually quite a fast SSD. I'm going to say quite a fast one. What it is, although the actual enclosure is limited to 10 gigabits per second, the SSD inside of it is actually an NVMe Gen 3 SSD, which has got way, way faster speeds than what the USB port has on the enclosure now the reason why i've got to explain that is because basically what we're doing here is flooding the USB-C bus speed because the actual storage inside of this drive is way faster than the USB-C bus speed and where that becomes really important is when we use a drive like this on something like an S24 Ultra because those speeds that we're getting there were way way slower than what this SSD can actually achieve and then once again when we look over at the iPhone 15 Pro Max here what's happening here is this SSD is actually actually being really pushed by the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, although both of those speeds that we just seen coming from the iPhone 15 Pro Max were not quite 10 gigabits per second, we were actually probably like, you know, a couple of hundred megabytes short of that. We can put that down to just basic overhead and stuff like that. So essentially we are kind of hitting that iPhone probably as fast as it can ever be across USB-C with a storage device like this one. So basically what I'm getting at here is that within this particular test, this particular SSD could not have been a bottleneck for the S24 Ultra. It may have been bottlenecking the iPhone, maybe ever so slightly, but we were definitely at the upper limits of what the iPhone 15 Pro Max can actually do with its external USB-C storage speeds. Now, although the S24 Ultra didn't fare well in this particular test, I actually really like this phone. I've only had it for a few days, but immediately it has come across to me as a fantastic phone for a lot of other things, maybe just not what I've done in this video. So basically what I'm going to be doing over the next couple of weeks is a whole bunch of videos about the S24 Ultra. So certain things like, you know, how to connect it to, say, a TV or a computer monitor. Also, things like connecting it to USB dock systems and stuff like that. I'll do a little bit more about other external peripherals and things like that. I'll also do some stuff with, like, screen protectors and some decent cases. And, of course, I will be testing its cameras out. I'll test its cameras out in its own right. Then I will also do tests against the iPhone.
phone as well i will also do another video similar to this one but in the other video i will be comparing the s24 ultra to the s23 ultra and doing the same type of speed test across usb c for reading and writing to the internal storage unit however i've got to say right now i've got a feeling that unfortunately they're probably going to be exactly the same so basically if you're into this stuff to do with the s24 ultra then keep an eye on me channel and stuff like that now there will also be links in all my videos to do with all the stuff that i use in the videos including any of the interfaces ssds and stuff like that with any of the phones so if you're interested in any of that stuff check it all out in the video description below and if you've liked the video please do give it a thumbs up and if you super liked the video or found it entertaining in any way then you may want to consider subscribing to my channel for similar content to this one anyways i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now